All right, so we're back here again with a Squire Affinity. This is a used guitar I got online. It has a little ding in it. It was about $175. Uh, but I like the color. I've been looking for that color for a while. So we're going to change the pick card. We're going to do the fingerboard. We'll put a new string tree on there. And that'll kind of do it, I think, for this. Oh, we're going to put on some black beauties. Black strings. 9 to 42. So that they'll go with the uh, black makeover of the guitar and the black fingerboard. I think it'll look nice in the long one. So here we go. All right, so one of the first things we'll do, because this is a used guitar, is we'll check the neck for straightness. We'll lay the straight edge on there. Take a look through the light. See if it rocks. See if there's any light coming through. It looks like the neck is perfect. It's actually straight as an arrow. That's perfect. So we don't have any problem with the neck being straight. The next thing we'll do is just check the uh, string height because we're going to have to get to that anyway. And before we change the strings, we can take a look. Um, I got a real nice string height checker gauge. I got this one here from Stuart Mac, but that's a pain in the neck. Oh, here it is. This one here gives you a nice, clear, concise look. Right at it. So we'll look and see if we're at about, oh, maybe about 12 thread. Super about four thousandths. Well, that's pretty good. Actually, it's a little high. So we can drop this down, the action down, these things, um, way up high. So it shouldn't be a problem, you know, making that adjustment. So we'll do that. We'll change the strings, and then we'll get the string height set. Uh, we're not going to use that gauge. Oops. Go right through the back. Um, what we're going to do is get a couple of new... string trees. That ain't them, but I'll find them. I got them there. And we'll put those on too. So the first thing we'll do is take all the strings off, and we'll take everything down, uh, and we'll get in the mood. Alright, so we're back at it again. So what we're going to do is take the strings down. I found some that I had some silver, uh, you know, chrome um, string ties. I think I'm going to use them, because this is all chrome up here. And uh, the black ones, I'm going to use black screws that I've got on the new fingerboard and stuff, but I'm going to use the silver chrome ones up here. Um, these strings look beat to hell, so we'll have to, we're going to replace them anyway, so these are all going to go. So let's start off with the string removal. We'll get all this junk off, and then we'll uh, take the string ties down. We'll strip down what we're going to strip down, and then start putting the new stuff on. Try to leave things turned up. And uh, the uh, tuners are loose. I would expect they would be. This is an older guitar. It's been around for a while. I think it's uh, 2010. Um, but it's in pretty good shape. It's got one little ding on the body, and that's about it for damage that I can find. The electronics all work fine. Um, and the color is not one that's made anymore. I forget what the heck the name of it is. It's uh, a blue, something blue. Um, I'll have to look it up. Um, Lake Placid Blue. Does that make sense? Not the one that they went out of um, manufacturing of. So we got almost all the strings off. I stuck my head in the way there all the time. And we'll bring it on the other end for a second. And I'm sure that string removal is very exciting for everybody. Um, so we'll cut these away and get the strings off. Yeah, I think it shows. That's the one piece of damage that's on there. But uh, people pay now to get things um, relicked. They pay extra for damage. 
And I got it included in the price. So that's kind of nice. I got free damage. This one string. I thought I saw that one popping out. There's two strings. Oh, the leaf's going. Oh my, these. Um, the strings are way up in the air. I don't know why they're up so high. I don't know why these don't come out. Who's really in there? I don't know what the heck is wrong. I think I'm going to take this back off and see what the heck the problem is. I don't know what's going on with the strings, why they don't come out. Maybe they've been in there and they're falling apart because they've been in there so long. Something. I don't know. We'll find out together. One more and we'll take the back off and get a better look in here. Oh yeah, that's up. Now this is set up pretty good anyway, that is. Um, now let's see if we can figure out what the heck is going on with the strings. Why they're not coming out of there. I don't know why. Where the hell are they going? No, why they don't come out. They jammed in. They should just slide right off the bat. Oh, they're just stuck. I think they've been in there so long and they've welded themselves in place. There's one more. That's three. Still got three more that are stuck. I guess it's just stuck. Yeah, they're just stuck in there. never seen anything so hard to get out. The uh, bigger strings are a little bit easier to release because there's some, you get a little push with it, you know. Uh, with these small strings, I don't know. I'm going to have to find something skinny, I think, to pop down the hole to pop those guys out of there. Maybe a small drill bit or a um, Wow, that's ridiculous. Because it's a small hole. I mean, the problem is that these are down inside this hole in here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but i got to be able to get into the, the uh, hole to get the string out of here. Where are we? Right here. This one and this one. These two still have strings in them. Uh, and they're the light gauge uh, high strings, so there's no pressure when you push back on them to get them to push out. So I need a minute. I'll get back to you. All right, so I figured out a method. So what I did is I took the uh, heavier gauge strings that I'd already removed, and I'm going to use that to poke down the hole. And I already did that once, and that worked, and that released it. So it's just... Um, they're just stuck in there. Really heavy. Um, I think this bridge has been replaced. This looks all brand new. And then whoever installed that and set it up, set this up way high. So the string action is like up on the moon. I don't know if you can see that or not. But all of these um, saddles are very high. They're like maxed out, so I got plenty of room to drop these down. This has just been set up poorly, um, but we'll fix that. We'll get around to that in a little bit. All right, that's number 62 on the list of things we've got to do today, right here and now. So the next thing I'm going to do is take off the uh, pick guard. Uh, no, we'll do that in a minute. We've got to go back up to the head. So let's go back up here. We'll do some low maintenance stuff first, right here. First, we'll remove these string trees. All right, 
can just wind those guys out. Because that's wicked simple to do and easy and it's done. And they're not going back on again, so I don't care about them. The next thing we'll do is we'll check all the uh, tuners and make sure they're all tight. I know one was loose. Um, the other ones may or may not be loose. All right, so that's the string trees. They're gone. Let's get a number 10. Is that a 10? No, oh, that's an 11. I need a 10. All right, that's a 10 socket. So we'll check these guys out. That's really tight. I thought they were real loose. These aren't loose. They're good. A little. A little. A little. And that one's a little loose, too. So those are all tightened up now, and that's good. That's the way they should be. So let's flip this over. The last guitar I worked on still have the plastic on the back of these. Um, but that's been done. As you can see, this is a made in China. Um, affinity. At the frets, the frets feel a little sharp, not bad. I'm gonna hit them with a sanding block and then we'll polish up the frets and stuff too while we're here. Um, I got these blocks I thought might work pretty good. Simple. And just polish up the frets. No extra charge. I suppose we should protect the um, uh, the fretboard, which I can do. I got a, a piece to do that with that I can lay right over. And then go after it with the... All right, so I got a protector. We can do that. And then we can do the fret. Just polish it up. Each one, one at a time. Simple. If we don't do any damage to the fretboard, and we clean up the frets. No heavy lifting. Somebody's calling. You're right. So we just polished up the frets. They come out pretty good. We're going to do some ronce and all to clean up the fretboard. Get it nice and shiny. Um, get all the junk out of there. Any stuff we left behind. Then we'll come down the other end and uh, clean up the body with some lighter fluid. Looks really good. This is from Dave, a tip from Dave's for all the fun stuff. If you're a serious Luther or an amateur repair guy like me, you do yourself a big favor by watching Dave's World of Fun Stuff on YouTube. He's a really smart Canadian guy, bass player who's turned into a hell of a Luthier. Um, he's been in the business for a long time, show business and knows a lot about instrument repair and how to do things and how to do things well. Uh, I've learned an awful lot from Dave. I love the guy uh, up in Canada. Um, if you got time, you got time to watch me, you'd probably be better off to watch Dave, to tell you the truth. He really knows what he's doing. Does good stuff, has good videos, you can look up a lot. He's got thousands of things he's repaired. So you can find almost anything that you're working on. Anyway, so there, we're done here with cleaning up. Um, again, the uh, this thing was crazy. I, I can't believe how high the action is up here on these uh, tuning uh, pegs. They're just, just a lousy setup. Um, whoever had this before. The strings are old. They were kind of embedded in the housing. I think this was changed. It was probably corroded um, and they did a repair. I, I would be my guess. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But um, it looks too good. It looks, it, it doesn't look the age of like the pickups and stuff, you know. Um, I'm just guessing. But anyway, I'm going to tighten some things up, make sure all this stuff is good and snug. Um, 
because I'm going to hardtail this. I don't care anything about whammy bars and using whammy bars and a floating bridge and all that kind of stuff. I have no interest. Um, and why do I care about that? It's because it's my guitar. <laughs> I'm not fixing this up for somebody else. I'm setting this up for me to use for me. Um, because I like it. I like the color. Um, so that's that on that end. Um, so the next thing we've got to do, what's the next thing we've got to do? We'll work up at the other end here. Put the string ties on. And then I think we'll do the fingerboard, and I think we'll call it a night for tonight. Um, it's getting kind of late. It's 8.30. I lost power up here for a flash, and I lost my internet and all that kind of silly stuff. So we'll get back to what we're doing and be done. Back in a minute. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is put the uh, chrome. Are these chrome? They're not even chrome. There's two screws over here that came out of this. So we could try to reuse them since they already fit the holes themselves. <laughs> the same problem the other day trying to get the screw out. Uh, <laughs> so let's do this. Let's try to put this screw in there. And then we'll put that in there. That was the hole trouble when you get old. You have a hard time finding holes. Um, anyway, we'll see if this tightens down well because it's the original screw that come out of there. So it should fit back in just right and it seems to be doing exactly that. So I'm going to take this other screw off, the other one. This is the same thing I did the other day. Uh, I'm having the same kind of trouble getting the screw apart from the place it likes to live. Anyway, that's that one. So we'll put the screw in here, we'll set it up on the screwdriver, then we'll go find a little teeny tiny hole, and we'll mount this on the headstock. So that's that. Now the next decision i got to make, I've got two different uh, inlays stickers for the neck. I'm not sure which one I like the most. One is kind of a humble black and the other is a little fancier. I'm not sure which one I like. Maybe I should go with the planer. The more basic look there. That's pretty tight. We can always adjust that when we get around to putting the strings on. All right, so we're done with that silly stuff. We'll kick that out of the way, put that over there. Uh, and then the next thing, like I said, is we're gonna look at stickers. So, oh, that's my fat belly. We don't care about my belly. I don't think we do anyway. So the next thing, I gotta choose which way to go here. See, these kind, this rose pattern is kind of fancy, and this is kind of plain. I'm thinking about going plain and save the the fancy rose stuff or something else. Um, there's the pattern we've got to follow. There's the first one that's going to go up on the top string, I mean on the top uh, fret space. So we've got to get a pair of scissors. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, and then this is going to start there, and then this is going to finish off the end. So that's kind of a layout, how it's going to run. This is all you need to do this. Push pin, a good stiff pick, pair of scissors, and we're off and running. So let's take and trim this down close. Get that out of the way. And we'll come in here close with this scissor. Try not to cut the design. That's going to go there. Right close to the fretboard. I mean to the fret. And then the next one will trim off the head. And then we'll get the next place ready to go. That's that one. So that's going to go there. Then this one's going to go here. 
and we'll cut the top of the stock off so it doesn't interfere with placement. And then we'll trim that very close on that end. Alright, so there's the first button to be covered. Right there. So what we should do is give this a rub to get these things to stick to the top. There's two pieces of, of adhesive. There's one on top that you peel this away from and then the um, and the decals come with the top layer so you can see and place them well. Which is the way the Giacomo stickers are made. So we can lay this down and get a pretty good idea of where we want this to show up. That looks pretty good. That one's going to go there. This one's going to go here. And we can take a look at that. These are going to blend in really well and not show a lot. You know, they're not going to be sticking in your face. They're going to be pleasant in the background, which is good. Sometimes I like things flaring right up at you, and other times I like them humble and peaceful. And I think this black um, pick guard and that whole thing is going to go well with this, uh, not modified, but a, a humble tone, if you will, to the uh, makeover and not a blaring I got an orange guitar coming on Tuesday that'll be a little different um, that one's going to be kind of a screamer so another police special <laughs> um, yeah. so that's the way that's going to start we'll do the rest of these all the way down and I'll uh, give you another view when we're all finished. This is just a little bit of tedium. Okay? But those come down pretty good. They're humble, peaceful, quiet, nice. Okay, now there's the fretboard all done. I really, really like the way that come out. There was an extra piece, and I added it to the body just as a detail. Um, but I think that looks really nice. Um, it's humble, it's not blaring, it blends nicely. And I think once we replace the pick guard, it's going to go really well with the new style Perloid pick guard um, to back it up. I think that's all going to blend just really well. So anyway, I think we're done for the night. Uh, we'll start the rest tomorrow. Be back. Well, here we go. Well, I'm still going. Um, we did lose power here for about an hour. Um, and um, uh, the power came back on and I'm wide awake again. It's um, pushing 11 o'clock at night and I'm still going. Uh-oh. That's not good. I um, pulled the volume knob up and the whole thing come out. That's never happened to me before. Came right out of the pot. So I gotta figure out where the hell that goes back in again. We'll be a little bit more careful on these other ones. Hope that these will lift off nicely. Maybe it's because of the age. Yeah, that one come off better. We'll go nice and easy on this one. You seeing this? Yeah. Um, so just lift it up a little bit at a time. I could have never seen that happen before. That's the first time that's ever happened. I've changed probably 40 of these pick guards. And that's the first time that the control knob came right out of the pot. I hope the hell that's repairable. Let's 
use the plastic from the other one. This is plastic. This is a protective coating they put on here. Some people never take the damn thing off, so it gets stuck under. I always peel it off before I put it on. Um, this is incredible. I don't know what I gotta do about this. I think I'll get my plastic coated um, pliers and pull that out of there and then see if I can reseat it. It's plastic jawed pliers. And this looks like a really good time to use that to have. All right, so that came right out now. Now I just gotta figure out That's back in there. I think it is. <laughs> no, it's spinning. I, I got to. This is a whole different problem. Um, how the hell I get this back in there again? Permanently, you know going back in, but it ain't like staying in. It's tending to lift right out. I gotta replace that pot. Now we got a whole different world of shit. Okay, well anyway, I wish I'd have waited and didn't have this problem until tomorrow. <laughs> I'd be more in the mood for it tomorrow. I just put that pair of pliers down. Here they are. Just when you think you've seen every stupid problem you could probably have, you really have it. Now, I can't remove this pickguard unless I can get this off. Now, this one's tended to stick in there like it's 1999. There it goes. Finally. Now, I've got some other ones that I can replace that with. That's not a problem. My problem is going to be this pot right here. Should we get into this tonight? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to fix that. I've never had the problem. Anyway, let's take it apart. We'll keep on going. Still stuck <laughs> from 2019. I think the pot will work okay. I just don't know how well that's going to stay in place. Uh, anyway, so let's we'll take up the rest of these screws. I'd rather do it with power to go quicker. These are like a crossword puzzle. There's always a, a piece you didn't expect. Something that comes up that makes you challenged. I don't know, maybe I can wedge something in there. A piece of paper or something to make that um, end stay in the pot. You know, make a better grip. It's very really greasy. There's a lot of grease on there. Uh, I don't know who the hell... I've never seen a pot so greasy. It's another thing. This was starting to go so well. <laughs> Bummer. Uh, 
All right, now, let's take the uh, new pick card, see how it lays over everything. Oh, I think it's going to be a good fit. Maybe a little goofy down here with the um, not lining up very well but I think there's enough room there for it to fit so we'll see how that all goes it's another part of the dilemma it's not quite free yet there we go okay now oh, that's free See how much room we got with the wires. Well, there's quite a bit of room. And that's no problem. Let's take a look at this pot. It's very greasy. something that's supposed to be there. Or what? Well, let's take this off and see where we are here. at the bottom now there's springs here in the back that support these so let's pull these out see if we can do it without losing the springs all right that's free just pop off so we can get the spring out we can there's the last screw holding this all together. Alright, that's free. This here one. Okay, there's the pick. Not a heck of a lot of shielding under there. Not the greatest pick card in America, but it was working. These are all ready to go back. What's my little pot doing here? Still loses a goose. It really should be replaced. See if this is going to fit okay. Seems like it should. Anything is a little too much. All right, let's take it. Let's take the night off. We're done. We're done for tonight. All right, we'll be back tomorrow and finish it up. I don't know if you can see the problem with this pot is that this knob here that sits there to, that controls the volume up and down is loose and it just slides right out. See that? I, I've never seen that before. I don't know if I can wedge that in and make it work or what, but it's a problem for another day. Shoot, that video was upside down. Anyway, I've started this. Uh, I got a problem with one of the pots, the volume pot. The stem is coming out. I'm going to try to put this back together, but I've also ordered a new pickguard with preloaded with all the pickups and everything in it. And then there's just a little teeny bit of soldering to do to uh, put that in. So I'm going to try to do that tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get this together and make it work. So we'll do that now. 
the soles and the pick out are too small for the um, for the humbucker. All right, so we're getting ready to do this. Let's throw a little more light. I'm going to try to just drill this out a little bit. Make the hole a little bigger. I'm just going to try to ream it. Uh, uh, because this little bit is actually not quite big enough to, to do the job itself. But I'm going to treat it like a reamer. Maybe it'll make the hole big enough that the screw can pass. So, so far, that's a failure. <laughs> I love my work. Am I doing this? We're live. I'm stuck. Um, I got to do something a little different. So, if we make the screw hole bigger than the um, than the head of the screw, we're really in trouble. So we had some plastic on there. Is it bigger than the head? Let's see if we can just do this by hand a little bit. And ream it out some. Let's see how that does. Alright, that worked. Am I still running? Yeah, that worked good. Alright, so I got another piece of plastic on here. Take that off that screw. We'll take this on this side again. We'll remount the hole with a drill bit rather than go banging all the way through it. Big and hot and heavy. Let's put that over where we can find it again. Oh, that worked great. Okay, so let's do that. Oops. Bring and put it on the bottom. And I'll bring the humbucker up and see if we can line it up with the hole. And get the screw to screw into the hummy. All right, we're biting. We've made that one. So that's one in a row. Now we've got to line up the other side. Put the screw in. Put the spring on. And get this side to line up. Before we make contact with the screw. How's that going? Am I in there now? Oh my god, I think I did it. Okay, so there's the next problem averted, finally. All right, so now we've got all three of the uh, all three of the um, pickups in place. I will start trying to put this thing back together again. Nice. All right, there's one screw started. Second side. Is it anywhere near even close? Are we going in? We are going in. All right, there's a miracle. So let's tighten that down pretty good. The headphones are dinging. That's the end of those things. What am I stuck on? I'm stuck on something. All right, now let's get the pots in the correct place out here. That's those guys. All right. Now, that's the way it's going to look. 
that's in the right place there. I think I'm going to try that. Let me get a scissor and some um, insulating tape. This is just a crazy idea. I got some uh, insulating tape. I got a small piece. I'm going to try to pull this out and then put this piece of tape across the bottom if it'll stay on there and make a, a little thicker platform here and see if that'll stay in the hole any better. What the heck? Nothing ventured, nothing lost, nothing gained. No, it doesn't go in the hole at all. <laughs> Already my plan has failed. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to take this over and plug it in and see what happens. Alright, so I took it over and plugged it in and it doesn't seem like the volume control is, pot is working at all anymore. Uh, I must have screwed it up when I pulled the head off and this came out. Um, I think it must have toasted the whole piece. So I got a new pick guard coming. Um, that'll be here tomorrow sometime. So this project will be on hold until tomorrow when the new pick guard shows up. Yeah. The thing will just make sure this is tight. Just for the hell of it. And it's plenty tight. All right, so we got carried away with that. Um, let's see if these screws are tight, and they're tight. Okay, so that's it for now. That's the way it's going to um, have to sit at this particular point. And we'll get some more um, cleaner. We'll clean up a little bit. Cleaner. We'll clean up a little bit. It's too bad. It's too bad. I had great hope that this was going to come through right from the beginning. But we've hit another wrinkle in the road in the adventures of guitar repair. But anyway, this is what it's going to look like. It doesn't play yet. But it will. I really like the fingerboard, the way that come out. I like the uh, perloid a lot, the black perloid on the uh, Lake Placid Blue Squire Affinity. Nice guitar. We'll finish it up tomorrow. All right, so moving on with the Lake Placid Blue. Um, this has a broken volume control pod. Um, it's actually, I got a new preloaded pick card, the same style and stuff, um, for about $30 on Amazon. I'm going to replace, all these components are from 2010, so they're all kind of old. Um, and I got the new Music Lily uh, replacement Amaroon pick card, uh, fully loaded from Amazon. And we're going to swap that off from that one to the new one is going to go on. And that should look terrific when it's done and play well. And that'll be the end of this project. So that's coming up. All right, so we'll get back to switching the pick card off. We got the new one. I'm a little confused. I'm going to have to study the wiring some more. But we'll take this off and see what it looks like. All right. Now, with that off, let's see if we can flip this over. Let's see what the hell is here. See if we can match one for one. 
All right, that's going to the pickup. And then there's another one going. I think that would work. Okay. I All right, I just went online and watched a video about how to do this. First, we've got to take the old one off, the old pick out out. I got my soldering iron over there. I am very unfamiliar with soldering, but I got a little kit that I bought and some stuff. So we're going to try to do this just the way this guy just showed me online. And first, I got to get things out. So we got to heat this up and disconnect this ground wire. There's um, three wires that are on this. Two of these are going to go to the um, jack. This other ground wire is going to come back out to the back and go there. So first, I got to take off the old pick hood and start by unsoldering this right here and seeing if that'll release that and we'll get this free. So I just had the soldering iron for a little while. I'm not sure it's hot enough yet to release this. My soldering gun is still too cold. It's not enough to burn the edge of the body over here, though. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a break. We'll get ready to unsaw. I think this is finally getting hot enough. Um, so we'll just grab onto this. And we'll see if it'll melt that solder. Get this to release. Please release me. Let me go. Well, it's making a dent in the solder, but it's not really getting hot enough. Oh, there it goes. Now we're slipping and sliding a bit. Just waiting for the big release. There we go. All right. Now that's free. So that's good. There's one in a row. Let me melt this side down a little bit. Just because I want to. <laughs> Spent a lot of time getting that solder free. All right. Now we've got to do a little bit of tinning over here. Um, with the pick out itself. With the new wires. See if we can throw this on here, and then we'll take a little bit of solder and put it on the end of the soldering iron. Well, it's good and good and hot now. And then we'll put some of that solder on the end of this wire. Uh, and that's what I understand is called tinning. Sort of like prepping the wires to get them ready to, to go here. And we'll put some more on here. And we'll tin this side that's going to go to the the jack. Put a little bit more solder on here. No extra charge. All right. All right. And we'll tin this up a bit. I don't think it takes a lot from what they say, uh, but it's good to have it already on there and be ready to melt in. All right. So that's that. So we've done phase one. We've done our tinning, and we've released the back wire. Let's see if we get a hold of this, and we'll take this out now. Take the jack out, because we've got to run the wires over there too. Let's lift this out and take a look here and what we've got here.
and I'll pull that one all the way out and we'll flip this over and we'll see if we can get a good look at what's here and see which one is which all right so the white wire is going to go on here and the other red is going to go on there so now that we know that um, let's put this down to protect the guitar and we'll see if we can unsolder. Now what I'd like to do is take a picture of that with my other camera. I could just cut that off. That's probably the easiest, quickest way. Let me get my wire cutter. And it'll get it out of the way. And then I'll know which wire is which, because then I'll do it one at a time. So we'll snip the white. We'll snip the black, the ground. Now we can take the old pick guard all the way out. That's the old one. It's got the broken part. That doesn't work. This one comes all the way out. Um, it's a beautiful brand new pick guard. Um, I just can't use it. Um, that's funny. Alright, so we've got that ready to go. So let's finish up the back part first, because that's what the guy did in the video. And we'll see if we can feed that through. And we'll curl these wires up out of the way. And see if we can pass that through. And here it comes, just like it's supposed to. It's a little short. So we'll get that flipped over. Do I have the camera on? Are you guys even watching me? You are. Everybody's right there. All right, so that's that. So the next thing we've got to do is connect this wire right there. It should be simple enough, right? So I think what I'm going to do, since we've already got a ton of solder in there, Get a little bend in the wire. We'll get this down where it belongs. And we'll hit it with some a hot soldering iron and try not to melt any more of the guitar. It's going lousy. Alright, let's get a closer grip with this to that. I gotta get it positioned so that I'm ready to land. Like that. And I can put it down where it belongs and then solder it right in. He hopes. This looks like it's working better now. I'll get it good and loose and hopefully get it good and tight. Oh, they say you're not supposed to blow on the solder. I'm not sure why. That looks to be nicely placed now. I'm going to throw a little bit more solder on the end. Why? I don't know. I don't have a good reason. But what the hell? No extra charge. But it'll be good and soldered, won't it? <laughs> Alright, so that's the ground wire to the back. Let's feed this up. And this is hardtailed. I'm not doing anything with the the um, what do you call it? The uh, whammy bar. That stuff. We ain't going there. Alright, so that's nice. That's a good connection. So then we'll flip this over. And now we've got to pass these wires through this cavity. Might as well twist them around, keep them together. I could put some um, insulating tape on here, on the body cavity, um, just because I'm here. What the heck? I'm not sure it makes much difference. Um, should I? Nah, we'll keep going, doing what we're doing, and see if the damn thing's going to even work. 
All right, and then we'll worry about buzz and stuff later. Okay, so that's that. That brings those guys up. Now, here's our first try going into the body cavity. How's that looking? What am I hitting on? Are all my wires going down nice? They seem to be. Huh? Is that going in nice? It's a little puffy over here. I don't know why. Let's see if all the wires are in the right place. If that's pulled through nice. Yeah, it seems to be. Okay, let's peel off this peel off. Get rid of the peel off before we start trying to put down um, screws and stuff. Um, this stuff is a pain you have to remove once you get all the screws in. Right? Right, and we've talked that until I've been blue in the face. And I think there's one more layer on there too. We'll see if we can peel the second layer off before we get too far further into this. There it comes. Now that's coming up. Nice. So there's layer number two. That'll be off and out of the way. That'll make me happy. I know nobody else will care. But I'll be glad. And we've got two layers coming up here. There's the first one. I could pop off those knobs. Um, just for the fun of it. Get them the heck out of the way. We'll get the second layer off. We'll get the first layer off. So I got in trouble in the first place. Just taking these knobs off. So I'm going to take, and while I still got that plastic cover on there, I'm going to pop these knobs off. I'm going to try to pop these knobs off. Here it comes. Got my head on the camera. Probably simple. Even a child can do it. Got to tell me where I can rent a kid. All right, let's see if this is just going to lift up all these things or if I should loosen the screws. I think I should loosen the nuts. What the heck? And then here comes the second layer, still coming up. All right, now we've got all the damn plastic out of the way. Give it a little stretch and it comes right around those nuts. There we go. Okay, good. And now we got the pickups that are still covered with their protective plastic sleeve. Oh, these are all shiny new. I'm glad I did this. I hope it works. Because <laughs> it'll be all brand new finish looking. Because this goes back, this is a 2010 model, I believe, from what I was told. Okay. Um, do any of the holes line up? That one does. These one don't. I think I'm going to have to drill pretty much all new holes. <laughs> I got three. One. There's two. There's three. Amazing. Um, how different things are. Anyway, let's do this. We'll tighten these up. We'll put a couple of screws in to hold it in place. We'll get the... Uh, uh, soldering done on the um, pickup on the um, pickup come on 
on the plug. We'll get that put in. And then we can test it out and see how it's going to work. All right, so we can do a quick, couple of quick screws. So one that lined up was here. Just put it down loose. Is there another one back here? There's another one. I think. I don't want to go tight. I just want them to make an acquaintance. And then the rest of them are going to be catch as catch can. I think. Oh, there's another one here that lines up. It's, well, sort of lines up. See if I can grab this one over the hill. That one's out of line a bit. This one's out of line, and we'll see if we can bring it in. Because even if they're out of line, sometimes you can make the uh, the jump. It's a quantum leap, sort of. Um, to get to the right position, but if it holds them down, that's all that matters. Um, it's not going to hurt the, the tile at all. So that's another one that's a little bit off, but it, it did catch, so if you can get it in the right spirit, you can get it into the hole. This one here is off quite a bit. It'll work well enough. And if you've got to drill another hole, you know, I mean, you just got to drill another hole, but if you don't have to, that's another one that's going in on an angle, but it's going in. You know, and it kind of drags the plastic up, but that's okay. I'm not worried about that uh, at all. Not at all. Plastic is made to be molded. I got one more up here and here. Neither one of those looks like it's on this to hold over there. Actually, see if we can shoot it from behind. See if we can get in. Now there's one more here. The actual hole is above, just a little bit above where we are. So yeah, and that works good enough. So that's good. So we've got all the um, screws in the pick guard now. Um, well, we can go back to our original job of soldering. Now, so that I don't screw these up, I've already got them marked one way or the other. So I'm just going to unsolder the white, and then solder the white. And then I'm going to unsolder the, the uh, black afterwards and then do that one separately. All right, so oh, you can't see a damn thing I'm doing, can you? Let's swing the camera over here this way. And I'll move, too, because I'm in a bad place here. All right, so we got that that way. I'll bring this up. And we'll see if we can't let the solder on here get softened and loosened and off. Feel my finger getting hot. And this would be a good time to use my little tool. There we go. Now oh, that's off. Now let's do them one at a time. I don't trust my memory, not even for that short term. Uh, let's bring this over. We'll cover the guitar. Bring everybody back over to the guitar body. And we'll finish our job over here. So let's see if we can get that around. Now we've got the white to go on here. We want it to go on that way. We've already tinned it. 
All we want to do is just sink it right on here. Don't blow on it. I don't know why, but you're not supposed to blow on it. Oh shit, the whole thing released. Well, that's not what you would call a very good soldering job, is it? Let's try that again and see how that goes. All right, that looks much better now. Now we've got to remove the black wire. And we did. Don't touch it with your finger, Stevie. You'll burn your finger off. Alright, so that's off. Now let's tin up the, um, the soldering iron again. And then we'll see if we can't place this ground wire better than we did last time. Maybe we should try to run it through. Does that make any sense? Maybe we should try to pin the, um, the piece. Maybe we should try to tin the um, tin this guy. Put some solder on there. I'm gonna flip this over. We got plenty of solder on the soldering iron. So now we got to get this placed. in a good position. Maybe we should come this way. Since that's the way it's going to end up. about as lousy a job as I think I could do. See if I can do it any better here. I think I need more solder on there. Any better? Let's see if it's strong enough. I hope it is. Let's make sure it's out of the way. All right. So if we turn this around and place it into the guitar, is that going to be okay? It looks like it will be okay. Now we can put a couple of screws back. And then see, just see, it will even play. Because technically, that's all it should require. from what the guy on the video showed me.
All right. Uh, I don't have any strings on yet. All I'm going to do is bring it over and test the pickups uh, in a live amp and see if it's All right, working. so that's that. Uh, we'll put the volume control knobs. We'll put the control knobs back on. Line them up. So we've got a fresh, brand new pick guide with pickups. Rather than screwing around with the old thing, trying to fix it up, which is even harder for me to do. Ooh, that's not looking good. That doesn't look like a hat replacement at all. <laughs> yeah, no, we may need to redrill that. No, that's good. It's in there all by itself. Uh, let me get a regular screwdriver and I'll tighten those guys up. We'll tighten up all the pick guard screws because we're all done getting into that because the wiring and all that stuff is done. Stuff is done. We've got a set of black beauty strings we're going to put on here. That's going to be next. We've got to put the cover back on the back, and we'll do that first. Um, and be all done with the back of the guitar and the front of the guitar. And we'll just string it up, and that'll be the end of this project. That'll make this Lake Placid Blue SSH Stratocaster by Skawaya, made in Indonesia in 2010 another completed project. So we're doing good. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get this done. The wiring scares the heck out of me. That's a very simple wiring job and it still terrifies me. Um, trying to just get the right corroboration from somebody online. So many people show you stuff but they don't show you what the hell they did. They show you that they're going to do it and then they get camera shy and shut off the camera and they don't show you their work because they don't want, I don't know, somebody to think they don't know what they're doing. Well, you don't know what you're doing. All right, so there's one screw. Five to go back here and then we'll tighten them all up and we'll be done with the back. We've got a brand new strap to go on here too that I think will go well with this whole project. I wonder if I should put uh, black um, strap knobs on there. I don't know. We'll have to see. That's one of those little picky things of mine. Um, okay, so now we're back and we're done here. So the next thing we're going to do is go to strings. So like I said, I got the black beauties. These are 9 to 40 tubes. 2nd and 5th, 3rd and 6th. Oh no, don't tell me I don't have a whole set. Oh yes I do. I thought I used one out of here. I do have a whole set. Alright, these are through the back. Oh no, they're not, they're through the body. So we got to do a 3rd and a 6th. Now i got to start doing math. Anyway, all right, we'll, well we finally got all the strings through the correct holes, the correct way. Now we just got to string it up to the guitar. And what I've done is I lined up all these holes in roughly the same position to make it easy on myself as far as lining this up to get them in um, and knowing the reference point to where the hole should be for the string to come through. So let's try this and see how well this plan is working. See how easy it is? <laughs> All right. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's through that one. I'll get it down and give it a tug. Give it a pull up. Put it in the right seating. I've got the magic spinning device. And try to settle this one down. Except we've got to turn it the right way. Look 
get a rough look at what the strain height is. Doesn't look too bad. But we'll check that too in a minute. Alright, so I'll finish up the strings if I can and then we'll be back. Okay, so here we are. We're all set now. I just tuned it up to pitch. I reset the, the string height. I got that all right. I set the pickup height. Um, what else do we do? We trimmed everything off. I took it over and played it a little bit and I'm going to bring it over and do a final play right now and we'll see how it plays together. I haven't played it since I got everything done, but it's all done now. The only thing else I'm going to do is have the strap to it, which I think is a nice kind of dungaree brown black um, that'll go well with this pick guard. Uh, I like everything that we've done. I love this guitar. I think it come out really well. So let's go play it and see if it plays well. And there's the finished product. Come out really nice. We got the black beauties strings on there. We changed the, um, here's what we did. We changed the uh, string trees. We did the neck. We replaced the pick guard and all the pickups because I had a broken pod, which was amazing. I did the decals here as well as on the fingerboard. I think they all come out really nice. This is a nice guitar. The new pick guard pickups and stuff are so bright, play so great. Really, really, really nice.